Welcome to Super Duck Mario's Let's Paint Together, a series where I'll uh, paint and at the same time learn about the different painting programs that are out there. The program we're going to be using is called Clip Studio. I've been using it only for a couple of days. It's very, uh, it's a very nice program. It flows very nicely, and I have it on the iPad, which makes it easy to use. So. At the beginning, I'm using a brush called the Thin Gouache Brush to do a thin outline of what I'm going to draw. I'm thinking of drawing a tree, possibly on an island. Maybe I'll put some little box island a la Minecraft. A little island floating in the ocean, maybe a couple of clouds, that's the plan. So here we're seeing more of the Minecraft look. Uh, in this program, I'm not going to be using layering. I'm trying to make this as, uh, as real to real painting as possible. So I've done the little mini island and now I'm adding a little bit of an ocean. Now what I found in this program that you can get what's called an intermediate color box. It's a box which has four corners. You put four different colors and it'll blend them. And it's a great way of picking colors when you're not sure for that perfect tone. Now there you can see that uh, I'm using the intermediate color box and I picked one of the colors there and I'll gradually move down the grass island and pick in different shades of green. We're here at the beginning of September, kids are back to school, and we've been living through a big lockdown through this pandemic. And I think a lot of people are trying to find things to do. Uh, Netflix, uh, Amazon Video, reading, music, and I think painting is a good one because uh, I can really let you concentrate on the painting and you don't have to worry about the pandemic. The nice thing about painting on a digital platform like the iPad is that if you press two fingers on the screen, you can undo any mistakes, which is great. The other nice thing about having this Clip Studio app on the iPad is that you can move the iPad around and make it so that it's easy for you to paint and you won't tire your wrist as much. Now one thing I found when I was filming this that I did so many rotations of the iPad that eventually I had the camera almost facing upside down. Uh, I'm using the iPad's own recording system. So uh, for, next, for the next video that I'll do, I'll make sure that doesn't happen. And, uh, at the end and in the middle, you'll see that the uh, video is upside down. I eventually figured out how to fix this upside down video. I basically played the video and re-recorded it upside down and that made it right side up. So I did do that at the end. So uh, 
but I think in the middle it shouldn't be too distracting because what I want you to focus on more is the tools I'm using and the technique I'm using. For me, I like bright, vibrant colors and I want the painting to have vibrant colors that uh, I find looking at bright colors makes one feel more alive. And so that's what I'm trying to bring out in this painting. And so here I'm working on the land and using the blending tool. The blending tool is a great tool in this, uh, in this app and you'll find that we use it a lot. Here we go back to the paintbrush and I use the intermediate color box to pick my colors. Uh, so first I, I did the outline, then I do the coloring, then I blend the colors together and then at the end you'll see I do a nice black outline. And that's kind of the look that I like, but there's different ways to use this program. But this is the one I'm, I'm using today and the technique that I'm trying to teach you. Now this video is about an hour and eight minutes long, but it's gonna show my entire technique. Now there are some parts where I did cut back a little bit, just because I was either not filming at that moment and I didn't want you just to look at a blank screen. But for the most part, uh, this video does have the complete painting. Feel free to, to leave a comment. I would really appreciate it uh, if you subscribe. That really motivates us to create more content. And if you have any comments on what you want us to paint or do, leave it in the comment section. So I'm trying to mix uh, different green shades and then once when I use, then I'll do the, use the blending tool to make it all look even. And that gives it a nice, a nice feel. At this point, I like the way the earth looks. I added a couple rocks in there and the grass is not looking too bad. Once it blends in a bit more, it should look just right. So here I'm blending. The blending tool has its own separate size. So you might find that you're painting with the brush and when you go to the blending tool, the, uh, the brush size of the blending tool is, has its own characteristics. So you may have to go into the uh, blending tab and adjust that to your preference. So here we're doing more blending. Uh, on the left side, you can see all the different tools. You'll see that it has uh, an eyedropper for picking colors. And then there's uh, three different brushes plus what looks like um, uh, paint by uh, spray. Below the spray can, one below that is an eraser, and then that's the blending tool that I'm using. Now you'll find that I'm not uh, I'm not an expert on this program. I'm learning this basically at the same time you're watching, and I'm trying to experiment, try different techniques. And uh, the reason I call this "Let's Paint Together" is because we are painting together, and in effect, as you learn what this program does. For the most part, we'll be using this program for a while, unless you guys have preferences for different programs. And uh, I really wanna use this program and I encourage you to get it and uh, feel free to uh, share your paintings with me or tell me where I can go find your paintings. Uh, if you wanna send them over, I'd be happy to include them in the video at the end. So I think we will stick with this program for a while. So if you follow this series, every time we'll try to use one or two or three different tools, okay? And mistakes will happen, we'll make errors, no big deal. That's what the undo button's for. 
And if we can't figure it out, figure it out, we'll Google it. Maybe people in the uh, who are watching may know an answer to something, and they can share it in the comment section below. Uh, so once again, I'm using the iPad version. The iPad version I got from the App Store. I don't remember having to pay anything, so I'm not sure if there's a cost. It might be a monthly cost, and I might be on a trial at this point. I'm not sure. I'll have to check on that and let you know in our next video. Or maybe someone can uh, leave a comment below with that answer. Okay, so I'm happy with the way the grass looks. It has a kind of Minecraft-y, cartoony look that I was going for. And so I added a couple of rocks and I added some grass as well. So I'm adding some rocks here and outlining them at the same time. Now I'm using what's called Adobe Spark to make this video now. It's crashed a couple times on me so far so I'm not sure if it's able to make uh, movies of an hour and eight minutes but uh, if that doesn't work uh, I would definitely uh, if you have any recommendations of, of better software to help me do these videos please uh, do let me know. Once again, I'm using the intermediate color box picker. Picked some colors from there, some nice bright green color. And now I'm adding some little grass seedlings around the rock. Here I continue working on the grass, adding some grass seedlings throughout, and soon I'll be working on the bark of the tree. really do like this intermediate color picker. There's another one very similar to that one, which I think believe is on the right side of that tab. And that one is like, uh, it approximates colors around a certain color. So it'll be like all the shades of green that you could imagine. So I've added a little flower here just for fun, uh, the green stem and some orange uh, leaves. Once again, I picked some nice bright colors. I believe in definitely in, uh, in music therapy, art therapy, relaxation, meditation, all good things to do during the pandemic and if you're feeling locked up. And if you have a chance, make sure to look at some of our other videos. We try to post videos that'll make you smile, make you laugh, boost your mood. We do believe here at Super Doc Mario TV that uh, laughter is the best medicine. So please do have, uh, have a look and we do appreciate if you subscribe. Uh, that definitely motivates us. Now you notice I like doing this outline of the, uh, after I've done the coloring and the blending, I do this outline. And it gives it kind of a cartoony look, but I do kind of like that. That's a type of uh, painting that I, I like doing. So I'm continuing adding a little bit of detail, finish with the flower and I'm getting ready to do the bark of the tree.
So here we are now coloring the bark of the tree. I'll pick a darker brownish color and as I go to the right of that tr main trunk, I'll pick a lighter color. I'm using the same uh, thin gauche brush. I find that that's a nice brush. It flows nicely, it blends easily. Uh, it's easy to work with. Okay, so here I'm continuing to work on the bark. I picked a little bit of a lighter brown and uh, I'm using upstrokes to the trunk and working my way up and around. Now once again, because I'm using the iPad, I can uh, flip things around as well as using two fingers. Uh, you can flip the actual picture around. But there were times when, for some reason, I was moving the iPad around, so the video ended up being upside down at some parts, but uh, that's just because I was painting it in a different angle. Uh, I was able to kind of fix it. At the end, it was upside down, but I did manage to fix it. So see on the left side, that intermediate color box, you see I put a dark brown on the left corner top and I put a bright kind of orangey on the top right. Well, there's two more boxes. You don't see them on, in this scene because I'm, I'm zoomed in a bit. But as you see, the program will estimate different colors based on those four blocks. Here you can actually see it a little bit better. You can see and once again here I'm working on the bark, a little bit of a lighter color in the middle, and eventually I'll do a blending technique to make that all blend together. And the blending technique produces uh, a mixing of colors, so it gives it a really nice natural look to the, to the painting. Here we, we get down to the left block and I'm adding some grass on that block and then the sides I'll add uh, dirt and then blend out all together and then finally do a black outline of the entire painting. So once again, I'm painting here now. Uh, note that the, it looks like the color pickers are on the right. It's actually on, still on the left. It's just that I moved the iPad around while painting and then it ended up uh, wrong side up. But I'm not too worried about it because really the painting itself is what I'm interested in showing and, and the technique. Uh, the tools I'm using are pretty, 
You notice that I made this extremely simple. I'm, I'm basically using, okay, you can start with uh, any kind of the pencil ones to do your rough drawing at the beginning. From there, you use your brush, pick one brush. Uh, the one I use is works pretty good. And then from there, do a blending tool and then back to the brush for the outline. I'm not using layers uh, today. Here I'm working on the uh, one of the branches that goes into the Minecraft little block island. Here we're back to uh, right side up so you, you see the uh, tools and everything on the left. I have it set up like that. If for any reason you mess up your uh, tools, you can go to Windows, go to uh, Work Area and just put Reset to Default. Here I am continuing to do the brush and I'm using the Apple Pen as well with this iPad. This is just a, a regular iPad. And um, a little bit of a greener color in the middle. I think that'll blend nicely later on. Sort of finishing off the right side of the branch. Now I wasn't too happy with that color choice so I did undo it a bit and then I went more for a greeny lighter looking color. Here I'm getting ready to do the uh, next color choice. I had picked initially a nice bright kind of fuchsia violet color for the right block, but I wasn't too happy with that. So I decided I'm gonna do more grass, I'm gonna make those into grass blocks. So uh, the nice thing is with this brush, it, you can paint right over that and have
So like I said, I wasn't too crazy about the purple color, so I'm doing more of a greeny grass color. Similar to the main island, uh, this one looks very similar to the main island. Uh, the, tr the main tree branches off into the blocks, and, um, and then I'll blend this just like I did with the main island. So I'm, I'm liking the green colors here. I think for my next video, I might edit it right on the Mac Pro. I think it'll be much better than doing it on the iPad. Uh, the Adobe Spark is a good program, but I think it wasn't meant to handle videos of this size of over an hour. Um, it's, it's Every time I do a voice on one of these images, slides, it will freeze up on me. So I'm not even sure how, many, how much of my audio is, is actually going to be in the video. And here I'm working on the uh, sides of the block, making it look like earthy, like an earthy block. So paint and blend.
So here I'm finishing off the block and then I'm gonna work on the ocean. Uh, for the ocean I'll be picking various blue colors using once again the intermediate color picker and then we'll blend the ocean as well. So here we are uh, painting, then I found a nice blue color for the ocean and making it like little waves. So we'll do a lot of the blue, I'll leave some, some white space so that when I blend I give it more of a frothy look to the ocean. Here I'm using more blending. Um, that is one of my favorite tools. And maybe in the comment area, the comments area, you guys can tell me what your favorite tool for Clip Studio is. Uh, for me, it's definitely the intermediate color picker plus the blending tool. Now we do just some small touch-ups here and there, and we continue to blend, and I work a little bit more on the trunk and the branches.
and the blending is doing a great job. It's really putting a, the uh, blending all the little colors together and making the bark look uh, very even. Here we're blending the ocean and the different shades of blue are blending and making it look quite nice as well. So definitely impressed. I'm definitely impressed with Studio. Uh, I'm not too impressed right now with Adobe Spark just because uh, it has crashed numerous times and at that point it wasn't allowing me to record my voice so I apologize for that. Here we have an upside down island, but uh, you get the general point of my technique. Now, some people say it's good to actually paint upside down because it'll make you uh, appreciate the colors more and to worry less about the actual drawing. Here I'm finishing off the ocean and making some whiskey waves by blending past the border of the ocean.
Uh, this is looking pretty good. Now we got to just work on the left Minecraft type of block. Now here actually, what happened is I messed up my uh, UI. So the way to fix that is go to Windows and you'll hit reset to default. Now time to paint the clouds. Now to pick the cloud colors was tricky is because it's on a white background. So white on white wasn't working. This yellow color I wasn't too impressed with. I eventually went with a shade of blue. The other option I had for the clouds was a little bit on the gray side, but I think the blue will probably look a lot better. And once we blend it in with the blending tool, it'll look, it'll look pretty good actually. So here I'm getting rid of the yellowish on this cloud and making it more blue. And I'm picking maybe three or four different blue shades. And that'll give it a, a layered look. And then with the blending tool, I'll be able to make it, uh, I'll go over the border making it look uh, fluffy. I can't emphasize uh, how, how good this, um, once again, this color picking area is. Uh, once again, the way you choose the brush size is if you look at the brush, you see the little hand on the top left? On the right, there's three little boxes. It's showing a blending tool right now, but the first is, is branches, the second is uh, settings, and the third is the size. can't emphasize enough how great this uh, intermediate color picker is. I use it almost now mostly more than anything. More than the wheel, more than the color boxes, more than the history boxes. Just because you pick four different colors and you can even just pick two colors. Pick a left color and a right color and it will give you all the different blends. So the third, when you pick that one, it'll open up a series of brush sizes. And in this case, uh, some programs have a slider where you slide to you know, left and right to choose the size. This one has the option of a slider, but it also has the actual, you can actually see the sizes. Now the neat thing with this program is when you choose a size, you'll see a little circle in the area. So you'll know what's happening. So 
So here I've done the blending of the cloud and what I'm doing now using the same blending technique, I'm brushing outside the borders of the cloud. And by doing that, I'm, I'm giving it a cloud, kind of a cotton candy, whiskey type, you know, kind of a feathery feel to the clouds. So here I'm using the blending tool to blend inside the cloud and then on the outside edges I'm taking the blending tool and brushing towards the outside and by doing that I'm giving these clouds a kind of a cotton candy feel to them and it's, a, it's an easy technique and once again just using the blending tool and the brush nothing else fancy here you basically choose your colors and you're off So now we're almost near the end. We're gonna finish this block here, give it kind of an earthy feel to it. And now we'll proceed to blend it. I added a couple of gray bluish areas to make it look like kind of grayish blue clay. And so this is just more of the blending, blending the uh, the sides, blending the sides, and it's working pretty good. And a little bit of a touch-up job, uh, deleting some of the roughness that I had done there. Uh, sometimes I just leave those lines there; they can be pretty artsy looking. But in this case, I wanted more of a clean look. Now, once we're all done with that part. The final stage to this painting is we're going to take the, the same brush. We're going to move it down to it, it, we, we, the one thing we haven't talked about so far is the different brushes, uh, brush sizes. OK, now if you look at that second column, right uh, above the color picker, there's three. Okay, so there's three boxes. Uh, the first box looks like it has three branches to the right. The second block has like a, a settings wheel and then the block after that has looks like uh, uh, two circles, one inside each other. That is the sizing. And the first one with the branches is the different types of brushes for that certain tool. So once you hit the tool that has the two circles, that's the one right on the top left, right beside the purple box, little box, that'll let you choose size. And here it is, here I've chosen it and you can see the different sizes. So I'm using a 20. When I do the outline, it'll be between a five, six, seven or eight. 20 is pretty good on a small box like that, but I may go even for a 60 or
Now here's a candle that uh, I'm doing, and uh, and there's a little gold candle candle holder that I decided to put along with this purple candle. And all that this candle needs will be a little wick and a flame. So here's the wick and then we'll give it a flame. And I'll give it a little smoke and blend that in to give it uh, like a like a little smoke raising from the uh, from the flame. So it looks like we're actually at the point where we're almost done. We just have to do some outlining. And we'll start with this box here. And when I do the outline, I also may do a little bit of cleanup as well. Clean up those little edges there. Get rid of the, some of those lines. Now my preference is to outline. You don't have to outline. You can do whatever you like after all it's art. And everybody has their own preference. I like giving it a little outline like that. Maybe it's from my old comic book days. I used to collect comic books when I was in uh, high school. And maybe that kind of, uh, you know, the in comic books, they there's a, someone who does the uh, pencils and then someone who does the pens. So I'm, I think it comes from there. So here, a little bit of a cleanup and some outlining.
So I've done the pants, the, uh, the outlining with a, with a nice dark color and I added a couple cracks to the block. And here I'm actually doing the candle and you can see the difference this makes because without that black line, that candle wouldn't look the same. And I think that's a technique that they use with comic books. They have the pencil, they have the colorings, and then they have this inker who inks. That's what it's called, it's called inking. Of course, inkers don't just outline, they do shades and they do a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, in the Immortal Hawk comic book, you can actually, there's a, there's a special artist edition where it shows the, the pages done by the pencil person and then done by the inks. And it's great at looking at that effect. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm giving that kind of special effect. And here we're just finishing the outlining of the candle and we're gonna start working on the trunk. We continue working on the outlining of the trunk and I think we won't touch the ocean or the clouds, but we will definitely outline the rest.
Here we uh, work on the bottom of the branch, outlining it. Now here, I, I really like the way the island come, came about. It has a really nice look with the colors and the little rock and the little bits of grass and the outline in black gives it a really sharp look. Uh, this came out really nice actually. So here we're actually finishing the island and this will bring our painting to uh, its final form. Uh, thank you for joining us and let's paint together. This is Super Doc Mario. Uh, at times you'll see Mrs. Super Doc Mario here too on the channel helping me out. And uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe. The more subscriptions, the more motivated we get and we'll be happy to keep doing content like this. We really do appreciate uh, you watching and uh, if you like this video, please like it, please subscribe and and to make it even easier, put on the notification on bell and that way whenever we have a new video, you'll get notified. Our next video will come out uh, as soon as we can. And this was done on Auto Spark on the iPad, but I think for sure I may try Auto Spark on the Mac Pro. 
um, I think it'll be a lot better because it froze so many times. I think the audio at parts may be cut off. Sorry about that. But I, I think you get the general gist that this program is good and you don't even need to know too many techniques or tools. If you stick just with the basic ones,